Well, welcome to today's hearing. Uh, entering foster care is a life-changing experience for children. Foster children are faced with a dizzying array of changes that are anything but normal, as uh, all of you know. They are separated from their parents. They are often sent to live with a family they have never met. They may start attending a new school, have to make new friends, and make new efforts to participate in sports and other activities they previously took for granted. On top of all this change, we know some children uh, welfare policies have unintended, the unintended effect of making life even harder for children. Rules may keep them from spending time with friends, participating in sports, and even getting a driver's license or finding a summer job. For example, Ryan Cummings from my home state of Washington wasn't able to get a driver's license while in foster care. He missed going on vacation with his foster family because the rules didn't allow him to travel. Georgiana Rodriguez from Florida couldn't play in the high school marching band. John Paul Horn from California needed to save money before his 18th birthday when he would be on his own, but his group foster home rules initially blocked him from being able to obtain a job. Such foster youth often speak of living in a separate world, where they are isolated from the community around them, making it that much harder for them to succeed. And while we clearly need to make sure children are safe while in foster care, these are examples that highlight how in some areas policymakers have gone too far in creating that separate world for these kids. Now the tide seems to be turning in some areas of the country. In recent years, federal and state reforms have tried to allow uh, more children to stay safely in their own homes or be adopted instead of spending it year after year in foster care. For children who must enter foster care, federal reforms have stressed helping children in their own school whenever possible. Some states have also taken on this issue directly. In 2004, California amended their laws to eliminate unnecessary restrictions on the activities of foster youth and provide foster parents more flexibility to make responsible decisions. In 2011, foster youth in Washington State, working with Mockingbird Society, highlighted this issue. And now my state is a working group to develop ways to make improvements. And as we will hear today, states might examine a law Florida enacted just this year that is designed to ensure foster youth are treated more like every other child. This law will allow foster youth more freedom to participate in age-appropriate activities like sports, sleepovers with friends, and getting a driver's license. And we're going to review those efforts today. In the process, we will learn what is being done to improve the lives of foster youth and how we can work together to better ensure that foster kids have, can successfully grow and develop like other children. That's our responsibility, and we welcome all of today's witnesses to help us achieve that goal. And some of you on the panel may not know my background, but I want to share this uh, very quickly. Uh, I was uh, in law enforcement for 33 years before I ended up here in Congress, so I look like I've been here for 40 years, but it's only been nine, so a little over eight, really. But 33 years with the Sheriff's Office in Seattle, and, uh, and part of my time uh, working in the Sheriff's Office, I worked on the Green River uh, serial murder case. You might imagine the number of young people that the task force members came in contact with, children who ran away from home for all kinds of reasons, unimaginable treatment sometimes in the homes that they ran from, ending up on the street, ending up in foster homes, from one foster family to another fa foster family, running away again, out on the street. And the detectives, so one of the things that I'd like to make clear for the record back in the 80s when we were working this case, uh, cared so much that they gave their home phone numbers to these children on the streets. And you probably know some police officers in your own community that, that care that much and, and accept those phone calls. And in the middle of the night, I can remember myself driving out to meet a child who said, I, I don't want to be out here 
but I just ran away from my foster home. I have nowhere to go. Uh, I can't be who I want to be. Um, they couldn't get adopted. They were 14, 15, 16. It was, it was a, a sad experience. But we were able to help some of those uh, young people. I get calls today still from some of those uh, mostly young women uh, who I met during that time who have grown to be uh, educated, successful, and, and have a family. So uh, there's always uh, good stories to share with folks. Thank you all for what you do, and I now yield to uh, Mr. Davis for his opening statement.